Hi, my name's Elmer Leonard Head. I was born in James Smith. I was born in July, 5th, 5th, 24th of July, 51. On my dad and mom's side, my mom was a, a Burns, my dad was a Head, and the way I was, I was in residence most of about for about ten years, and the history of my life mostly grew up with uh, in sports after I got out of school. I got four brothers and five sisters. There was ten of us. Oh yeah, I, I remember quite a bit because it was. Uh, I don't know. It's. It, most emotionally, mm -hmm. yeah, because I, I didn't, I didn't learn a lot. There was just, I, I lost my language, and you know, being in residence is, uh, it, it always, it's always all in, in your mind, because what happened to you in, in school, mm -hmm. and but anyway. Uh, when I used, I went to school in Gordons. I was there for what, maybe ten years, and never used to come home in the some um, like winter breaks, like like uh, Christmas, Easter, you know those breaks. We never used to come home, but but that one year, we came home on a Easter, and. I told my father about what happened to me in school. And now uh, I was already, what, 14? And my dad didn't send me back to school. He took me out of school and we went, we moved to Hudson Bay for work, start hard labor there. I was a really young age. We shouldn't have been like, you know, but what happened, my dad didn't like what I told him, what happened to me in school. We came down one time on a, a summer, and a guy named Jerry Constant, he, he watched me uh, play ball, eh? And that's when I, that's when he took me to be, a, to stay with him. Instead of going back to where Hudson Bay and that, so I stayed with him. Started playing ball with him. That's right. That's right. Started playing ball. I was back in 1971, and I started playing ball with uh, his boys, and we went all over the place, like play ball. We we had a good team. We were called James Smith Redmen. We started, well, we started off as a league. We played in uh, Card River League around here, and we played in PA League. And then as we developed, uh, the years went by, we, then we started winning tournaments. Then we'd go to the States. We went, oh, we went far as uh, New Mexico, went to Oklahoma, Washington, yeah, we went to North America, all, pretty well all over, and we won a couple of westerns, so yeah, we, that's why I, that's why I got arthritis now today, yeah. I, I abused, I abused my body and now I'm paying for it, yeah. Oh yeah, I did. yeah, and uh, like m my family, m my wife, she supported me on that because I was I was a pretty good ball player. Eh? Yeah, it's the same thing in hockey. It all started as uh, I was a forward, and then we we had a hockey game one time in Beattie. Edwin Edwin Head was a 
He used to be the goalie, eh? But he didn't show up. He didn't show up this game. And we didn't have a goalie. And then they they throw me in. He tried, give it a shot. So I put him on. And then, you know, I, I put on the goalie pads. I put them on the wrong way. I, I played hockey through that through that game with my then and then on the third period that's I switched my goalie pads around. It looked a little better, eh? I did pretty good for the first game. Ever since then I was stuck in the net. Yeah. So you uh worked Yeah, I on became that. yeah, I became a pretty good goalie too and you know and uh we were called Tomahawks back then but and then we were scouts and raiders. Yeah. Um, so and no. down, yeah, down along the along the line, uh, these these teams would pick me up to go to big tournaments. Like like back in the eighties, I went to I went to Vegas five years in a row with different teams. And then I one year I went with uh, Gordon's Olden Hawks they were called and. I won, uh, I won a tournament one-on-one. -on -one. I won a tournament there. And that was a, a seven-day a seven tournament, 24-7. Anyway, uh, most of my life was sports, yeah. Well, me, I'd, I'd say I'd, I, was, I was gifted. I was gifted as a sportsman. Yeah. I even won, uh, even won championships in uh, curling. That's pretty well it well I tried soccer but I was I tried volleyball but I was I was a little too short in volleyball. Okay. And but you know uh, talking about sports that that's that's most of uh, what I talk about is sports. I know I know sports pretty good. Like uh I'm a brown fan. And you know, I was I wasn't I wasn't a politician. Mm -hmm. Not like my wife; she, she was a politician. But but she she backed me up in sports. Like she let me go. She let me go to games and that. Rarely, rarely I missed ball games, hockey games, and curling. I had, I had a good, I had a good life. Been married, been married for 46 years now with Phyllis Head. We had six girls, no boys. After after I was done ball and all these sports, and I started uh, putting a, an outfit together. An elder come up to me and said, "Do you want to dance Paul?" I said, "Sure." So he gave me this eagle. Is it? He gave me these feathers and he said, make a bustle so it. So I went to an elder, taught me how to make a bustle. So I started, got this, uh, my outfit together and started dancing powwow. And this elder said, you're a pretty good dancer. So. So I started dancing polo now. After after my, done my sports, and Zelder Zelder told me, "Well, you you're going to smudge." We took uh, we took my outfit to the a smudge, and he gave me sweet grass and blessed blessed the uh, outfit, eh? So he did it. He, you did it the way it was supposed to be done, and so, so I started dancing pow out, and and then the family fo followed me around, and then uh, we I went all over. I was a tradi traditional pow pow dancer, which I never never used to compete though. Just traditional, 
because I didn't believe in competitions. You know, not competitions are not part of healing. Traditional dancing is a healing. You're healing people. You're healing yourself. Traditional. That's that's what traditional. It's mostly about. You know, I'd like to see these kids get into the get into culture. At least get some of their language back. A lot of the, a lot of our kids now don't they don't even speak Cree, eh? They don't even understand Cree. And you know, in the, I don't know. Speaking of the, in the future, they're gonna, they're gonna need uh, when when they become elders, they're gonna have to try and learn their Cree and talk about their grandchildren, the way we used to live. And a long time ago, it wasn't easy. It's that's why our kids are spoiled now. It's. Uh, they don't, they don't, uh, they're not in traditional. Like, it's always, it's either computer or cell phones, they're always in. And my recommendation is in school, they shouldn't have cell phones, they should be concentrating in school. That's why a lot of these kids don't listen to their teachers. They're always on their cell phones. They don't know what's going on or what they're supposed to be learning. Yeah, well, yeah, these kids should, you know, they should stay in school. They shouldn't just go out and went miss school when they want because a lot, of, a lot of these kids miss school eh and yeah I see that our youth is uh, kind of getting out of hand they, they should be staying in school to, to be learning and because you, you know jobs are going to be hard to come by when they grow up like like it is right now. A lot of lot of kids, a lot of our kids graduate, but you know they they stop right there. They don't they don't continue to to keep educating themselves to go to high school or university. Speaking, speaking of my grandchildren, I got, what is it? I got 24 grandchildren, five great, great grandchildren. And I'm looking, I'm looking after four of them. Oh, they just love coming to our place, kids every weekend day. Yeah. So we have a handful on weekends, it, which is nice to see. Sometimes me and the wife take a break. Our traditional, uh, well, the way we live on reserve is pretty pretty much the same all the time. Like you know, the only, the only thing you see different when people dress different is when you go to cultural days or powwows. But otherwise, otherwise, when you're on reserve, it's like it's all it's like every day. And the funny part is, we why do, how come we don't wear suits? Like you know, like these politicians, and like the office, the office people should be dressed dressed up, eh? Like like out of the reserve, like when you go to offices outside the reserve, the pe people are dressed up. They look. They look smart, like you know. <laughs> so that's the way. That's the way our office would be. Mm -hmm. That, that's what I like to see changes. That's a, that's the kind of change you like. Yeah. To 
a store is good and uh, a gym is good. Our, our new hall that's going to be opened is, it's going to be, I think it'll change, it's going to be, it, it'll change to our kids. They'll, that way they'll have something to do, like in the evenings, instead of, instead of going around looking for trouble. Because our kids are starting to do that, they run around at night, they get themselves into trouble. Which is which is sad, sad to see. But uh, having a store is is a good is a good thing. You don't have to go all the way to town, go put gas in.